Hello everyone, and yes, it is true, uh, Anand once again re-enters the world's top 10 in classical chess, uh, and this time he did it by defeating Nijat Abasov um, uh, in the uh, German Bundesliga, uh, and also, uh, for, for those of you who don't know, Nijat Abasov is one of the participants of the FIDE candidates tournament that was starting two months in Toronto. Uh, he qualified um, uh, through the through the FIDE Grand Swiss, uh, Magnus Carlsen won the event, Fabi got second place, uh, Pregnananda got third, and the top three finishers are seeded directly into the FIDE candidates tournament. But as Magnus declined his invitation, uh, Nijat Abasov, who finished fourth, uh, got his invitation to the FIDE candidates tournament, and he, of course, accepted. Uh, but here he faces, uh, well, he faces a former world champion uh, with uh, uh, wielding the white pieces. So let's see uh, how, how how it went down. So Anand with the white pieces opens with pawn to e4, and Nijat goes for pawn to c5, the Sicilian defense. Of course, uh, it is very unlikely that... Um, uh, even though Anand is an incredibly uh, powerful opponent and he's a legend in chess, uh, uh, it's uh, hard to say if Niger would actually uh, use uh, some of the preparation that he has prepared for the candidates tournament for for, for this game, or, or he would rather save it for, for uh, maybe a surprise. Uh, but who knows, uh, he did choose a very, very interesting line that's almost never played, so... Uh, you know, you, you be the judge of that. We have knight to f3, knight to c6, and Anand goes for bishop to b5. The Nishmedino Rosolimo attack, pawn to e6, and now castles. We have knight to g to e7, and rook to e1. And this is a very well known position of the. Uh, Nishmedinov or, or the Rosolimo attack where black almost always plays pawn to a6. It is the top move recommended by the engine and white will always play it. Uh, sometimes uh, uh, the, the engine also loves knight to g6 but no one plays that and sometimes they play knight to d4 which can be a little bit tricky but still nothing, uh, nothing really happening here. You're just gonna trade and challenge the center with c3. But here we have pawn to b6 by Nijat and it is a move that has almost never been played. There are a few few games but it has been played by a very very strong player uh magnus carlson played it against the ali reza uh, in the 2021 norway chess edition but in the armageddon game where he only needed a draw with the black pieces and magnus did get a draw uh, with this pawn to b6 line and uh, he defeated ali reza in armageddon but let's see uh, how the game continues here we have pawn to c3 uh, of course preparing pawn to d4 pawn to a6 challenging the bishop and now bishop back to e2 again uh, this might look weird Weird, uh, you know, just putting the bishop in front of the rook. Why not tuck it all the way back to bishop to f1? Uh, but uh, it, it does make sense. Plus, the bishop can later on occupy the f3 square, go after this diagonal, and it is uh, what the, the engine likes. Also, okay, you could put the bishop on a4, maybe tuck it to, uh, back to, to c2, but bishop to e2 also very nice. Pawn to d5, Nija strikes in the center, e captures knight, captures, and now pawn to d4. And here, uh, there is a game where knight back to f6 was played, but here Nija plays knight bishop to e7, and it is now already as of move 9 that we have a completely new game. So Anand takes on c5, uh, we have b captures on c5, and now pawn to c4. And okay, uh, Anand wants to trade queens and go for the end game. Uh, he does have a little bit of an edge. Uh, he has uh, uh, two pawn islands, and Nija has three pawn islands, and okay. Okay, with both players having the bishop pair, could be a little bit easier for um, Anand to pick off, uh, well, either the A or, or the C pawn. Knight back to f6, and now he trades queens. Queen captures bishop, captures, and knight to c3. Uh, but already an, an interesting uh, decision by Nijat. He goes knight to d4. The idea, or the logic behind it, being that he either gets a beautiful outpost for his knight on d4, or he trades, uh, Anand trades, and then uh, Nijat uh, plays c captures on d4, uh, fixing his pawn structure. He will no longer have three pawn islands, he will have two pawn islands. Uh, but uh, it's... Um... Uh, well, not as simple as it looks. Knight captures pawn captures, and now Anand plays bishop to f3. Also, one of the reasons why the bishop was uh, uh, better placed on e2 comes with an attack on the rook, and now after rook to a7, Anand goes knight to a4. Again, knight to e2 is the move you kind of want to play, but this runs into the uh, very nasty bishop to a5, attacking the rook, and only after the rook moves away from the e file will you play pawn to e5, and now the e, e, e pawn is uh, very safe without the rook on e1, otherwise if the rook was on e1, you could just play knight captures on d4, and the e pawn would be pinned, and uh, Nijet would get a very strong center. So that's why after rook a7, Anand doesn't go to e2. Anand goes knight to a4. Now with the very nice controls uh, over uh, control over b6 and c5. Now you are already thinking about b4, c5, and you know pushing that pawn. The bishop is. Uh, 
Predator uh, play the role of the of the escort of the pawn. We have bishop to a5 attacking the rook and now rook to e2. Uh, bishop to d7. You could also castle but Nietzsche at first uh, develops as it does come with tempo on the knight. So knight to c5 attacking the bishop and rook to c7. We have rook to e5. Uh, Arant says, "All right, uh, I will. I, I'm having some nasty pressure on this bishop, and now if I capture on a6, your bishop will be hanging. So bishop back to b6, putting pressure on the knight, and now we have a trade. Knight captures on a6, and rook captures on c4, uh, and just pawn to b3, chasing away the rook. Rook to c3, uh, and here Anand again uh, shows uh, well just uh, how, how strong a player he is. Now, uh, w when you see this diagonal freed up, you will you will play bishop to a3, no question." Ask. You will play it regardless of it, if it's a good move. You just want to control this diagonal and you want to stop the black king from castling or going king to e7. And if you ask the engine, it's even uh, the top move recommended by the engine. But it's also uh, the move that Anand played is also the top move recommended by the engine. It's like the engine says that these two are just as nice. But uh, yeah, to my eyes, bishop to e3 looks really, really awesome. Uh, but Anand plays bishop to d2. Uh, first uh, forces the rook to move away, uh, but uh, okay, let's see what would happen if bishop to a3. Since this is a classical game, we could explore some lines. If bishop to a3, uh, let's say bishop to c6, you, uh, offering a trade of bishops, as this is a very strong bishop, the bishop on d7 is doing really nothing. Now you have the option of going bishop to c5, and this is why the bishop to a3 move was so strong, also because it prevents bishop to c6. Now the bishop is undefended, and you're threatening bishop captures um, uh, on, on c6. Uh, and if bishop captures on c5, you will first deliver a check. And once the king moves, now you will play rook captures on c5. And after rook captures, knight captures, it looks like white is up a piece, but it's only temporarily because there's rook to c8. And now you snatch a pawn. Knight captures on e6, f captures, you move the bishop, and you enjoy your extra pawn. Uh, you have two connected pass pawns. Black has a pass d pawn, and it will be white pushing for the win. Plus, the game is on both sides of the board. You have a bishop against a knight. Um, uh, uh, excellent winning chances here uh, but uh, let's see what Anand figures uh, he goes for bishop to d2 uh, attacks the rook on c3, rook to c2, and now bishop to a5. He wants to eliminate the dark square bishop. Okay, Nijad accepts, bishop captures, there's really no better move, rook captures, and now king to e7. Now there's no need to castle, the king will just be very safe on e7 uh, with the dark square bishops absent, and now the rook is coming into the game. But now comes knight to b4, attacking the rook on c2, rook back to c3, and now rook to d1, going after the d4 pawn. Uh, rook to b b8 going after the knight here, knight to d3, and now uh, rook to b5, uh, offering a trade of rooks, but Anand just goes rook to a7, and he pins that bishop. Uh, and uh, you could move the king right away to d6, this is actually perfectly fine, for example, king to d6, pawn to e5, but first we have pawn to g5. Uh, also with some ideas of h4, uh, uh, h5, g4, and claiming more space on the king's side. We have pawn to h3, stopping g4, and now king to d6. And now we have pawn to b4. Uh, a bit more precise here would be rook to a6 check, simply because uh, the, the black king has no squares, and only after the black king moves back, then you play pawn to b4. Uh, maybe a nice uh, nice way to win more, more space. But, uh, of course, uh, Anand knows this, and he decides that it's not relevant. Pawn to b4. Pawn to h5, and now pawn to a4. Plus, Niger was already getting extremely low on time, so... Uh, of course, Anand did not want to over overthink anything, uh, you know, b better let uh, Nijad burn his time. Uh, rook back to b8 and pawn to b5. The passed pawns are now rolling up the board. Pawn to g4, captures, captures, bishop to e2, and now bishop to e8. But here comes rook to a6 with check. Uh, that's why the rook was perhaps uh, better placed on b6, but uh, yeah, a, a little time on the clock. King to d5, and now even pawn to f3. You could also consider some other moves, but pawn to f3 is just very elegant you just take away the uh, some uh, important squares from from this black knight and now not a lot uh, for for Nijat to do he played the uh, uh, pawn to g3 it's a very committal decision you could also trade uh, but he has to play something bishop back to f1 and now knight to h5 and this knight to h5 is a uh, 
well, a suboptimal move to say the least. But again, Anand did not want to spend time uh, finding the correct, uh, the, the most correct idea because rook to e1 is just uh, saying, okay, your knight to h5 move is terrible uh, because now there's the threat of rook to e5 check winning that knight. The knight cannot come to f4. Uh, you cannot play f6 because then the e6 pawn hangs and you would just have to move the knight back, knight f6. But now you run into knight f4 check, uh, king to c5 and knight to e2 attacking the rook and winning that g3 pawn uh, but okay uh anand again uh, did not want to waste time he played knight before check king to e5 and now rook to e1 with check and this is move 39 one more move needs to be made to reach time control and uh, nijat had eight and a half minutes when he started thinking about this position and he only played the move with uh, less than 20 seconds on the clock and there were two uh, possibilities here one is to block with the rook the other one is to play king to f5 one is okay one is not okay and uh, nijat uh, decided for the for the wrong one point is that after rook to e3 there's just no way for white to force anything knight to d3 check for example now you play king f5 but uh, you are controlling the e file and if the pawns get traded uh, rooks get traded off uh, there is no actual good way for you to go after those pawns still you will have to deal with the two connected pass pawns on the queen side but there's also the very annoying uh, e pawn so that was the way to go but he played king to f5 and now anand went rook to d6 uh just a uh, very strong going after the d4 pawn and not a lot for uh for ninja to do uh to give you an example if you if you defend with pawn to e5 uh, you're just gonna get uh, king hunted knight to d5 attacks the rook and if you don't want to blunder uh, blunder or give up your rook uh you have to move it but now 97 check and now look at this the rook controls um uh, the, the sixth rank also this rook can come to uh, uh, capture on e5 if, if the king moves if you decide to defend the pawn then even king to e4 check king g5 and rook to g4 will be checkmate so uh, such uh, possibilities are there. And if you go rook to e3, which is a little bit better, it's still very hard. Rook captures, pawn captures, now knight to c2 going after the capture with the check. Uh, and if, uh, well, th there's nothing for you to do. If you go rook a8, you go after the pawn. Uh, even rook to a6 stops the, 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 the capture of the pawn. You cannot trade because the, the pass pawn will be unstoppable. Uh, also, captures is coming, so it's... Um, a completely winning for Anand. Uh, so rook to a8 was played right away without uh, reacting to the d pawn, and but now knight to a6. Of course, Anand not just gonna give up the 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 a4 pawn. Pawn to e5 and now pawn to b6. Here again, Anand uh, did not want to, uh, to to allow Nijat to think on his time. Uh, but here there's a there's a beautiful maneuver that ends the game on the spot, and I'm sure you see it now that I've mentioned it. You don't even have to pause the video. So I'm just gonna show it you know, in a second. Uh, but yeah, the idea is knight c7. Uh, you attack the rook and the bishop, you cannot go after the pawn because the bishop hangs, and of course it seems like you're blundering a piece, but if the rook is ca if the knight is captured by the rook, uh, bishop d3 check. King f4, rook to e4 check, king to f5, there's no, there's no better move, or you go king to g5, uh, and then rook to g4 is checkmate, so you, you have to go under the mask of the bishop, uh, but now, uh, whatever, you can capture this pawn, deliver a nice check, and then again, king g5, uh, rook to g4 will be checkmate. So it was in the position, but, uh, you know, uh, pushing the pawn is also winning, so Anand doesn't go uh, for uh, calculating the, the forced line. We have rook to b3, putting the rook behind the pass pawn, and uh, yeah, okay, Nijat could after this b6 move if he was engine precise and found bishop to c6 he could still make uh, life very annoying for for vishy uh, but he played rook to b3 just put a rook behind the pass pawn and now knight c5 attacks the rook rook moves and now rook captures an e3d captures and pawn to b7 now the pawn of course is unstoppable rook to b8 pawn to a5 we have knight to f4 and now knight to e4 uh, and he was in this position on move 47 that Nijat Abasov resigned the game uh, as there is nothing more to be done here. Uh, you can't really do all that much. Uh, for example, if you play pawn to e2, then rook to f6 is just checkmated. That's the uh, point of the, bringing the knight to e4. And there's no good way to um, handle this. If, if you just go knight to h5 to cover the f6 square to avoid checkmate, then a6, of course, is coming. a7 is unstoppable, and uh, you, you'll just bring a queen into the game and win the game easily. Uh, so yeah, so it was a very, very uh, interesting game, uh, very interesting choice by Nijet going after this uh, b6 move. Like I said, almost never played a6, is played exclusively here with knight to d4, but he tried this uh, move that Magnus played against Talireza. Magnus was able to get a draw here and win the tournament. 
uh, but it did not go that well for uh, for Nijat. So yeah, brilliant, uh, brilliant stuff by uh, the former world champion Vishwanathan Anand. And what does this mean for the uh, for the live ratings? Well, Anand again climbs into the world top ten. He overtakes Sergey Karyakin and Lenier Dominguez Perez. Uh, and uh, is again in the top 10. Look at this. N not a lot changing. He Hikaru lost uh, a few points, uh, you know, uh, in third place. Magnus and he Magnus and uh, Fabi still over 2,800. Uh, you have then Ding, uh, Anish, uh, Alireza, uh, Nepo, Wesley, Wei, and then number 10, Vishwanathan Anand. And look at this. Look at uh, all the people on 2747. Uh, uh, Nodrebek and the four Indians. Uh, Nodrebek, Gukesh, Pragnana, Davidit, uh, and uh, Arjun, Ergeisi. Okay, Arjun, three points shy of 27. 47 uh but yeah just a huge inflow of young players you know overtaking everyone in the world top 20 look at the young shift of duda is number 19 i mean uh the, the 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 man who definitely belongs in the candidates tournament uh is you know uh, n number 19 in the world so yeah pretty crazy stuff there uh but yeah uh great stuff by anand uh, he just uh is forever he remains in the world top 10 and no one can you know take that away from him and he will probably remain there until he decides that it's the you know uh, enough of classical chess uh so yeah uh, that's the game hope you guys enjoyed it uh, hope you guys are ready for the candidates tournament i'm very much looking forward to it and all of the games that uh, will be played there uh, so you know we will have to wait a bit for that but we do have a lot uh, going on until then of course the the green chess classic is coming and uh, I'm, I'm sure that's going to be a lot of fun uh, i would like to thank Kevin uh, Hawkins, Daniel Heist, the GMD over GMG, Anthony Palumbi, uh, and Matthew Witten for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions uh, and whatever else happens in the chess world. Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.